Sky Howdy, and welcome back to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio. Will here from Texcana. I'm uh, in the woods up here, what I call Ground Zero, one of our best Bigfoot hunting areas. And I found a really interesting find right here. I want to share this with you. Look at this igloo structure right here. Of course, right now, most of the vineage on top that would hide it is gone. But just see this. You can see that this is not something that's done by nature. It's actually been woven together. It's about five, a little about five foot four inches by about eight foot right here. And again, you got your little entry hut right there where you can see where whatever it is has been going in there and sleeping. What's pretty cool is if you look over here right next to it, what you have is one of Bigfoot's favorite foods. This green stuff you see right here is actually a dewberry patch. And there's a trail going right through the middle of it. So I thought this was pretty cool. I thought you might enjoy looking at this. Again, I'm gonna leave, give you one last shot to see. These pine needles are really wet, so y'all forgive me. But you can see how big and cool that is. In love by marriage, got sick. And uh, so we had to take them back. So he and I just came back out. And <clears throat> I told him, so man, this is the same spot that me and Reese saw that big foot walking down the edge of the road. And he goes, well, one I saw was right over here. So we knew he was in a good spot. That's when we saw that mama and two babies that night. So he laid them out right here. Five hogs. Five big hogs. I've got a picture of them. I'll show them to you. And the one on the, the, this coach in here was turned upside down and he'd been disemboweled. We come back here two days later and that one that had been disemboweled had been picked up and carried off. I mean, it wasn't like a deal where something drug him off. Where, how far did he get carried to? Uh, never found it again. Oh, never found yeah, it. Yeah, so never something found came it. and grabbed yeah, it and took it. Sure did. Coyote's taking down a wild. That'd be tough to do, too. I'd, I'd bet on the daggum coyotes myself. There they are, right there. There he is, right there. Oh, wow, there it is, all ripped open. Yep, yep, right there, that's where and you And then see. you came back the next day and it came was gone? two days later. And it, it was gone. gone. I said the next But it was time. the only one that was ripped yeah, open. Yeah, it was the only one ripped open. And then we go back to, there's the tracks for the Bigfoot. It picked it up, you can see the tracks. Right oh, there. yeah. And then one, two, three, four. That was one, what two, was three. missing the next yep. day. Yep, that's what was missing. Wow. And those are big hot. You know, and, and that's, you know, that's something like I said that, that I look forward to if, if, you know, 
if and when it happens, you know, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be one of the first ones telling them we're gonna have another show to do, buddy, because I'm gonna be giving you a call. Like, yeah, I finally, you know, had something like this happen to me. But like I said, the people, the amount of trust that I have in these people that are saying these things, you know, because it hasn't happened to you, and you've heard me say this, and you've heard some other people, but because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it's real. I said Bigfoot was not real to me until I walked up on him down at those gravel pits that day in 1977, and then all of a sudden he was really real, and he has consumed my life. Ever since then, I mean, I, am I obsessed? You betcha, but I'm obsessed in a good way because uh, we're learning more about these things and getting to share information. And uh, man, I got my family involved, my wife and my son and, and some of my friends, and that's and that and that's what we do this thing. And if you would have told me that the the second before I walked up on that creature, I said, man, you've lost your mind. <laughs> no more. I may be the ones lost my mind, but it wasn't because of that. So, yeah. Well, I always enjoy those people that are like, I've been out hunting for 50 years and I've never seen anything. It's like, well, what were you looking for? <laughs> do, you, do you go off that little path that goes to your deer stand or is that the only place you ever walk in the woods? You know, uh, and just because uh, you haven't seen Bigfoot doesn't mean Bigfoot hasn't seen you. That's, you walk say, man, that's right there. <laughs> you know, and that's what I tell people all the time. I say, if you hunt, you've been in the woods, I said, it's seen you. You may not have seen it, but it has seen you. You and I both know they'll stand perfectly still, man, and let you walk right by, you know. Yeah. And, and then you can go find them on your video later on and get PTSD because they're like 20 feet away from you and you didn't notice them somehow. <laughs> man, I, anytime I take pictures, I never delete them from my phone just for that reason because, man, all of a sudden you go back and look later on and you might have missed something all of a sudden or you're in the right angle there or whatever and then you see you know what was there in the background all the time so so that's what you know as i said i never i never erased my stuff for that reason you would be surprised how many things that, that you find that you go back and you're real excited when you get there you finally take a deep breath you know and then, and then when you do and then all of a sudden you're like oh man this was here the whole time what and you know, so i don't if you ever have something on your phones folks or in your cameras on your sd cards don't erase them you know, no. go through and look at them because you will see things that you uh, like. We talked about with tracks. Everybody said, "Well, man, why cast the tracks?" Well, man, tracks, uh, cast the tracks will actually show up the dermal ridges and some things there also that you don't get otherwise. So right. it's very much worth it uh, to do to cast those tracks and again to to have those pictures that you can fall back on. Totally agree. You know, and that's again something that's worth documenting this stuff, even if you're accidentally documenting it, like me walking up the side of the road and filming a dog man and a dozen or so Sasquatch sitting there watching me walk past up the side of the I had no idea I was filming anything. I just had the camera going in case. Well, it was worth it. <laughs> well, you know, and, and that's film constantly, film all the time. Because you know what? If you got nothing, you can always erase it. Well, that's but, right. And the other thing is, like Bama Bigfoot, Joyce Gray has pointed out, a lot of the stuff that she's found, and she's found some really spectacular stuff. She's got video going, and she's looking through this video. She's clicking through it frame by frame. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes you'll only get them for like two or three frames. You can see that face, and then it's gone again. Are, are they just like disappearing themselves? Did they move a little bit? Because they can move super fast. Sure. But, you know, you'll see like two little eyes, and then whoop, they disappear again. <laughs> yeah and i just read something a, a while ago here and, and uh it, I, I got a lot of old magazines and it was about how to spot wildlife and that's one thing that's like what you said the first thing they say is you're never even with deer with moose with bear uh with elk a lot of times you don't see the full animal what you see is either like you said the eye or you might uh -huh. see the ear flicker or you see a, a horizontal line in a vertical forest you know or whatever and, and uh so that's well, I, I really, uh, that's absolutely right. And I really got trained to do that when I was a kid because just for S and G up there in Northern Minnesota, where you have lots and lots of winter and we had snowshoes, we would go out rabbit hunting on our snowshoes and these thickets and stuff. Dude, the rabbit's white. The snow is white. Everything's white. Yep. How do you see the rabbit? You look for that little black eye. That's it. That's how you spot them. So I got so used to doing that. It's just like force a habit. Whenever I'm looking at the woods, I'm looking for eyes. Where are the eyes at? <laughs> well, and, and and that's it. And this was uh in one of my my outdoor life books, but it was you know they used to have a little segment there in the middle, and this was telling about this. And this was before Bigfoot. This was I think this book was copyright like 19, maybe 75 or something other like that. 
And so before Bigfoot ever got started, but the, the principle was the same. And that's what you and I've talked about as far as for how we got to where we trained our eyes to see what we see. You just you just can't always just go out there. They're not going to do like uh, Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny and do the overture curtain lights dancing in front. You know, you're going to have to sometimes do some looking for those things. If they don't want to be seen, if they don't move, even with deer, something you're looking for, you're expecting to see. If they don't move, a lot of times you, you don't get to see them. So, again, that's that's one of those things that uh, that you go in there and you, you save the things. Uh, that you have on your camera, like you're talking about with what she does as far as for, and goes back and looking back through there. And you would be surprised because there's a such thing called protective coloration. You can be sitting there looking at something or another and you're not seeing it because the way the protective, the, the coloration is so that they can hide from predators or so that they can actually hide from prey or else they're going to starve to death. I bass fish. And uh, a lot of the, the way you catch a lot of these really big bass is uh, I've got a, a several nine, 10, 11 pounders out here and actually caught a 13 pattern but what you do you sit there and you can look and you can see them when they're on the bed in the shallow water but you're looking right at them and you have to have some really good glasses to be able to see in there i generally carry some even when i'm bigfoot hunting i carry a set of yellow lens sunglasses with me and that gathers the light so if you'll carry something other like that but you'll see these things and you're looking right at them well bigfoot has got it you can imagine if a, if a you know 10 pound bass has got it what a thousand pound bigfoot has as far as the coloration so that it can survive so uh, you know and, and that's that's a real real story folks i mean that's just the way it is they uh they uh they don't want to be seen or sometimes it's not as beneficial for them to be seen and uh if one of them is looking for me and he's in a bad mood it's gonna be great for my for, for my health too not to be seen but but it well, is a lot of them uh seem to realize what a camera is and if you've got one pointed at them they're going to make themselves real scarce so you're not going to be able to get a picture and now this is coming up a lot with my favorite canadian bigfoot researcher my buddy blaine tyler yeah who has recently, the last couple of years, we get a lot of these pictures that are all kind of the same thing, where he's sitting there with this almost half smile on his face, and he's taking a picture of himself, and like this whole side of the screen is open. Why? Because he knows there's one following him. Right. And if he takes a picture of himself, it ain't going to try and hide her cloak or anything. It doesn't realize it's on camera, That's and right. he's getting pictures of him. <laughs> well, he just picture. sent one at a power line cut up there. He's coming back from the power line cut, and he just takes a picture of himself. There's one standing right in the middle of the power line. Obviously, it's not a tree. It's in the <laughs> middle of the power line. <laughs> you know, and, and the, the picture I got, if y'all saw my travel channel show, you'll see one. There's a mama standing there, and she's leaning out behind a tree. She's got a baby on her chest. Well, I looked for her for 10 to 15 minutes. She was throwing pine cones. She was throwing sticks. She was throwing rocks and could not find her. And every time I'd turn around, I guess she tell by my body posture I was fixed to turn or or tighten it up so finally I, I had a somewhere I had to be and so I, I decided well shoot I better just leave but I thought try so when I left I just threw the camera up over my shoulder turned towards where this noise and where the, the sticks were being thrown from click the deal I come, I forget about it for two or three days it was my sister's birthday I forget about it. I'm like well stupid you've got Bigfoot pictures or you've got pictures there on your phone sure enough maybe I Bigfoot it. pictures figures crossed <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so I've got that picture of that mama and she's got that baby sitting right there on her chest so you know something like you said when they don't realize they're being have their picture being taken they're not near as apprehensive but you can see duke i find them in the woods and you can ask Stephen. we would have them walking by where we had our cameras and we even have we don't have our cameras stuck to the side of a tree we have them shoved inside the brush piles and uh, a lot of the pictures that we've gotten from them they have walked by accidentally that flash goes off then your next picture is you've got an eye looking into the lens right there or you've got <laughs> <laughs> you've got hands reaching in there and then you're going to spend about two hours trying to find your camera after that but it is they sit there they know what cameras are uh, even i think sometimes the deer know what cameras are you know i'm big well, outdoors when i we have one we, cams and stuff you get pictures of the animals walking right up and looking at them exactly kelly shaw had an elk walk up and lick one of his cameras and Jenny was like, well, you're going to clean that up? And he's, hell no, it smells like an elk now. They won't even smell the camera. <laughs> that's that's live bait right there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it is. That's that's one of these, these these really interesting things about what they recognize that we do. They have no idea. Uh, I think they recognize guns with some people, you know. Where, oh, yeah. Where, where a lot of where Stephen and I hunt is public, is public land. And I do not know how in the world some of these people do not know that these these beings are up there where we're hunting at but evidently they don't 
because uh, I've even talked to some of the, you know some of the game wardens and things like this, and, and uh, it's, they have no idea what's actually living there in the woods right around there, probably sitting there staring at us while we're having that. The talk. road yeah. from where we just left, and uh, I knew this old cedar was over here. He pushed this cedar down last year, two years ago. I'm sorry, and he's stripping that bark. I said I assume to him it's just like going to a grocery store or a CVS, Walgreens somewhere that has off for medication or whatever to keep the bugs off of him but i knew this thing was here but i came over here just then this is not my first time around this area as i crossed this trail right here i've got about a 19 inch track right here before he stepped out of the water it's not a very wide track but this guy here has got just a really long foot but you can see right there where he the toes are again going right through here and following this trail right through there well hilariously enough uh, jason uh what's his last name i can't think of it right off the top of my head he does bigfoot documentaries and he was in michigan and he filmed two of them and he had robin up there filmed a separate one with her and then he had a whole bunch of people that were up there and she was did a part in that one too Jason Kenzie. And yes. during the beginning, I want to be sitting there on the stump narrating while we're here in Michigan and blah, 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 blah. And I'm watching this and I call Robin and I go, Robin, have you watched the beginning of this show where he's sitting on the stump narrating? Yeah. Is that a Bigfoot behind him peeking its head up over the stump looking at him? She goes, yeah, there's two of them. There's one further back on the left also. <laughs> like, okay, just checking. Thought, that, thought that's what it was. He had no idea. While he's filming the intro, there's one behind him. <laughs> he probably still has no idea. <laughs> and, and these are experienced people, experienced Bigfoot researchers who don't who have more than a basic knowledge of, of of Bigfoot, and yet they can still do what they did, just like the one did to me that I told you that Daniel got in that picture right there. It's it's just amazing the amount of intelligence that they have, and and. Uh, when you look at it, you realize, oh, man, I'm so glad that they don't have a bad attitude because they did. We never met <laughs> the first day we went in there. And they yeah. can catch you. If they're chasing you, they can catch you at any time they want to. Or else so y'all, you would have another guest oh, yeah. tonight on your show. You, you, you cannot get away if they decide to chase after you. There was a story of a guy who claimed he got chased by a bear when he was out hunting. The bear was on its hind legs and it chased him out. And he was in bad shape and his leg was given out and he'd have to stop and pant because he had pain in his side and stuff. And obligingly, every time he stopped, the bear would just stop and wait for him a little bit. <laughs> as soon as he looked like he could start moving, the bear would make noise and scare him and he'd start running again. And the bear kept following him at about the same distance on its hind legs. Yeah. Starting to think maybe that wasn't a bear, but he was never willing to admit that or didn't really realize the difference between a bear and a booger. That's right. <laughs> You know, and, and, and that man, and they're so fast. If you've ever, you ever seen one run, I even got to see the Gugway on running on all fours, man. He was extremely oh fast, but I've seen Bigfoot run on too. And man, they can cover some ground. You know, people estimate 40 miles an hour. That's not a, that's not outside of the realm of, of the truth and possibility. Cause man, they can, they can get with it. And when they go to chasing something they really want, like say a deer or something like that, I imagine the speeds could even, you know, uh, hit that and maybe more so. So, so again, they're just, uh, it's, they're not, they can do the two feet, they can do the four feet. And they're almost, uh, according to a friend of mine who has nine of them on his property, he said they're equally, uh, and he gets to see them all the time. He brings them host his Twinkies. And uh, he <laughs> said, <laughs> and he says, man, he said they're equally as fast on one set or whether they are on another. You know, people fuss at me about why, you know, I give them candy bars. Well, hey, my son's a dentist. We never get him pay his bill. He's going to be rich and I'm going to be right there sponging off of him. So. Uh, so anyway, according to Kevin, who actually used to have foot races with Glag when uh, Glag was only a little bit larger than Kevin. Not only could he not come anywhere near to ever getting close to beating him in a race, no way, no way in hell. And he's only the same size as a human at this point. But he said he was way faster on all fours than he was on two feet. Exactly. And he had to actually tell him running on all fours was cheating. He had to at <laughs> least run on two legs. Quit cheating. <laughs> Well, this friend I just mentioned with the nine I'm on his property, he's got a mother uh, on there. And a couple of years ago, she had a she had a baby and she was about eight foot tall and she would cradle that baby 
in the one arm and she would run on three and he said man she could basically outrun all the others in that troop on that three than what they could do on four or two so amazing amazing that they can do that they're not handicapped uh, that they're so uh, equipped by nature to do so many things that we just don't understand and if, if we did understand it we still wouldn't understand it you know it's hard and to acknowledge something like that don't forget the grip strength of those little babies too oh. they put one on and that thing grabs on and they can take off like you know yep a racehorse and that baby ain't gonna fall off of it down there nice and tight oh yeah I don't know, the, the one uh what was it uh timber giant bigfoot where he caught right. the one sitting there and he was like zooming in on it and stuff and something moved they could never really figure out what that was and thinker thunker looked at it closer and went that was a baby and it grabbed like right on the mama's face right. literally she had to move over oh face. yeah <laughs> Grab a little bit of slip on, buddy. They're there now. It's, it's you know, it's not like a barrette's gonna fall out of here. Them dudes are there, and as long as they got hold, they know, you know, they know mom or daddy's gonna take care of them. That one picture Daniel and I got last year, you can see right in the middle of its chest, that 10 and a half footer, and it's got a handprint there in the middle. There's a, there's a, it, I don't think that's it. I got to looking at him like, man, that's awful. That's a big, big foot, but he would have a hand bigger than it. So if, if there's a baby back there, like shit, they're not falling off, man. There's like, you uh -huh. know, Stuck with gorilla, go, gorilla glue, no pun intended. You know. <laughs> right on. Okay, so did we cover everything with you and Daniel's expeditions? Because we want to talk a little bit about other stuff that you've done. It's been quite a while since you've been on the show. And no doubt you have some other pictures lined up you want to talk about. Yeah, uh, we did as far as from, you know, me and Daniel, like I said, he's, just a, uh, he's a great asset to, to what we do. Uh, man, like I said, he went even this time and bought him some snake boots, so he wouldn't be as apprehensive about you know being in the woods like that you know i mean we we're wading through trails i mean through puddles we're making our own trails like i said and then he's just just right there with you you know the whole time and that that's really comforting when you've got you've know, got somebody there with you that that's that's looking for some of the same things that you are and, I, and i've kind of I, I don't share i have not uh taken anything holding back from from trying to to share with daniel all experiences that i've had and boy he's really just taken me in so we've had some good stuff uh, you know, some days we had to leave a little bit. We had some things we had to do around here, and so we didn't get to make the full, you know, full day trip like we normally did. But, but uh, very much looking forward to him coming down again and getting to spend some time in the woods like that because uh, we got some very, very active areas, and it's just going. I feel like it's going to just get better every time. So, what other, uh, what other cool uh, pictures and stuff did you have that or experiences that you wanted to share with everyone on this time around? Sure, I would. Uh, I had some. Um, I'll tell you about the, the day before my birthday this year, August the fifth. I was actually on Millwood Lake up there. Uh, Millwood Lake has had reportings around it uh, several years, but actually, me actually having any up there has, has been just very slim. That I could say, well, it could be something else. This time, we were up there fishing. We were back in this uh, this Oxbow Lake. Oxbow Lake is where the uh, the river current has gone through, and it's actually cut off on each side and made a lake of its own. Whereas you still have the river on the outside. We we're back in the back of this oxbow lake right there and there was a creek that was going into the woods and man all of a sudden we start getting the first we start getting the you know that guttural growl that you get that's too loud for anything besides a freight train and so we're sitting there and man my buddy looks at me and he's not a believer yet <clears throat> and uh, he said what is that and i said you know did him a deal so anyway we get it again and then we start getting the stink i said buddy that's a big foot and I said, he's just right over in the woods. Well, about that time that things kind of got down to the serious part, well, his phone rings and he's got his phone on uh, some kind of air blast there because it's his grandson. He wants to be sure he doesn't miss his calls. And I certainly understand that. But then all of a sudden, all the activity just quit. And I'm like, man, can you not turn that, you know, messing with him, you know? Well, we went on down to the next creek, which is about 50, 75 yards away. And sure enough, we went back into the woods again. And this thing has followed us down there. And so we start getting the growls again. Again, we start picking up the stench that they can put out. Uh, you hear the brush popping over there. And so we just got really, really still and sit there. And I think finally it recognized us as what we were. And it finally took off on its own. But again, this was August, man. It was hot in August down here. That was August. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, and if so uh, everybody thinks, well, they, they all migrate. They don't all migrate. There's some that are always still left down here, you know, in the woods, whether they're as watchers, you know, whether they're, they're you know, taking care of the, the, the business or, or watching over what little ones are there or anything like that. But again, um, um, Mary Bowling and a friend of hers came down here and uh, I can't remember what month it was. It was right at, at fall. And so we were going down to a place called Thornton's Well. Thornton's Well is right there on the Sulphur River. 
and Mercer Bio, and man, it's just it's Bigfoot Central too as well. There's been so many sightings and experiences down there, and so as we're uh, down there, and of course, again, I can't tell you really unless you've been out there just help what a good researcher Mary is, and this friend of hers, she has been teaching him. So man, he's really knowledgeable as well. And so there's a guy comes running up there, and he's got a, one of these uh, boats that kind of has the the uh, I won't say hot foot or something other like that, but it doesn't have, it's got an impaler more so than a propeller. So he runs up there and a real, real friendly guy. And, you know, we speak and everything. And I said, man, what are you doing down here this time of day? Cause it was hot still at that time too. And he goes, well, I'm just checking my, my cameras to see if, uh, if I got any picture of any animals on there. And I said, well, I see you talking about hairy animals and he kind of grins a little bit. And I said, two legged animals or four legged animals. And he kind of grins a little bit more. He goes, I know what you're talking about. I said, so spill the beans. Have you ever had any encounters? And he goes, well, he said, I have actually heard some of the howls, but I've never seen anything. Well, he contacts me not too long ago there. You know, deer season just recently finished up here. And he goes, man, he goes, uh, I couldn't wait to get in touch with you. <clears throat> he said, I've got a couple of, uh, of uh, experiences here where I was actually able to record the calls of, nice. uh, of these Bigfoot. So he had it to happen on two different occasions. So I met him last Thursday um, down there on the way towards um, Sulphur River down there. And we pulled over and he, he was kind enough to to unload these pictures and these these calls onto me there. And, and the, so uh, I took him home and listened to him, played them out and put them on Bluetooth. We had some Bluetooth speakers, put them up there, man. You can hear it. It's just the very same thing as I heard in 1977 the week and a half or two weeks before i actually had my first sighting and man it just blasts and it it truly when i say it fills the woods folks i'm not kidding with you it, i've heard so many people who have heard bigfoot scream like that and they'll say the same thing it fills the woods well it did and so a uh, very very good guy he's going to uh take me out this next week as a matter of fact to uh, some places he knows about and to exactly where that space was and hopefully we can get some of that recorded for this Nebraska Bigfoot conference. And so uh, that was just really, really cool. And, and you met this guy, he's, he's really, really super. I'm not gonna out him as a, as a Bigfooter yet, but uh, but anyway, so then had another you have, young lady. Uh, do you have permission to share the audio recordings that he shared with you? Yeah, I, I do. And uh, Okay, well, we're gonna be playing those right now then. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had them, I could send them to you there. You know how this, People, when you're getting recordings with Bigfoot, it can be so loud to you, and then you record it on your recorder or your phone, and man, it's you're like, oh my gosh, what what happened to the volume of this? But I've got a good friend named Duke Sullivan that has done a real good job with some re recordings that we sent to him. Hopefully, you can help me out. And uh, uh, Stephen just got through sending some stuff to a guy named Shane Church from Southern Bigfoot Alliance, and so he was able to help him. So hopefully, I can get these uh, get these recordings done and brought up here to the next show that we're going to get to do. Hopefully. And, and so uh, he was just really, really super, super guy. And then there was a young lady that we met later that afternoon. We stopped uh, at this restaurant to eat. And so uh, uh, Mary and I both had on Bigfoot shirts. And so uh, she looked at, she goes, she goes, Bigfoot. And I said, yeah, she goes, my husband saw one of those this year. And so man, of course, like I said, when I hear that, man, my ears get big, my antenna go up and I'm ready to start listening. I said, well, tell us about it. And she goes, he was down there duck hunting last winter. And so as he was running down there early that morning, there was a Bigfoot actually in the middle of Mercer Bio. And he thought it was a stump. And so he just kind of went around it. Well, then finally Bigfoot stands up, takes off. And so then all of a sudden his boat just turns around. He goes back to the house. And so uh, he <laughs> was, she was kind enough to share that with us, man. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? And so like I said, never met her before in my life. Uh, and these are two people this one day and then have one more there at a, uh, she worked at a Sonic in a little town called Prescott, Arkansas. And I had on a Bigfoot t-shirt there that said the legend Boggy Creek across there. And, and she goes, oh, where'd you get that shirt? And it had one of the longer sleeve shirt there. And, and I said, well, I said it was given to me, you know, uh, the, they're redoing the movie right now. And I said it was given to me. And then they had some that were for sale at this movie that they were redoing, the Perot Theater in Texarkana. And she goes, she goes, have you ever seen Bigfoot? And I said, yeah. And she goes, well, I have too. And I said, oh, really? Of course, you know, I'm always going to ask. Man, I don't, yeah. I don't mind making a nuisance out of myself to hear a good Bigfoot story. I said, where did you see yours at? 
Well, man, back in, uh, I can't remember exactly what year it was. When my son was 13 years old, and we were down in a little town called McNabb, Arkansas, on a deer lease. We were hunting one afternoon down there, bow hunting, and we had one do us. Uh, that was the, uh, I think you mentioned the, uh, the Sierra growl. And, buddy, people think that's something that's been made up. Uh, by the people who did the Sierra ground, who did Sierra, uh, Sasquatch sounds and everything. It's not. We were down there, and that was right at twilight, and that thing blasted us once, and then it quit, and just like you did. And I mean, man, it just, and everything, hey, man, everything quits moving. The wind even quits blowing just about it. And, man, so my son's about 100 yards away, and he's in a tree with just a, a bow, and that's it. And I'm down there with a crossbow and a machete and a pocket knife and a nine-shot twenty-two pistol, none of which are going to be sufficient should there decide to be an altercation. Man, I take off running towards him, and I get right towards a, uh, there's a, a curve right before I get there. I stop and start walking so I won't scare him. And uh, so sure enough, as I do there, I said, well, buddy, it's getting dark. Don't you think it's about time to go? And his, of course, you can't fool kids. Even at 13, he goes, man, did you hear that sound? And I said, yeah, I did. He said, what was it? Well, I, I said, well, maybe that might have been some barred owl laughing. If you ever heard barred owls laugh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. And he goes, no, it wasn't, Dad. He said, that was that Bigfoot, that sound that makes from that comes on Animal Planet. Well, it was, man. And I couldn't lie to him. I didn't want to lose his trust. So uh, that's one of those those crazy things like that. That uh, so so hearing that that sound there, and I actually got to hear what I during deer season this year where I was, got to hear that one day that sounded almost like Sierra the Sierra growl again. And I was the only one down there, and I was well armed, but I wasn't worried about that. Like I said, I haven't had any exper any negative experience yet. I haven't feel like I have to shoot one. But still, when you hear it, something that you're not used to. You realize how how fortunate you are to hear it, but still, man, just how much that's it's pretty creepy because you realize they're the boss of those woods that you're in hunting. You're there visiting, they're living there. So, so that was really really good to have those things happen. And that girl from Prescott, when I asked her, I said, "Where'd you see yours at?" It was right there, about probably 300 yards from where me and Reese had that one that sit there and screamed at us that day. And so to hear that, like some lady I'd never met before and something that comes along that verifies an account that you've had, you know, something's happened to you. I mean, that's, that was, I was just blown away, you know, and you know, that, uh, that's the sound I refer to as a, ta a Tasmanian devil sound. Yeah. The Tasmanian devil. That's you know. the only, um, that's the only Bigfoot sound that i know for sure that i heard other than uh whoops uh -huh. before i heard the sierra sounds recording because right. you know i actually heard that sound live and in person and close up multiple times in the spring of 1972 and i didn't hear the sierra sounds until way 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 yeah. way after that right and this thing was right up on our yard he was all ticked off about something and for about 45 minutes every two minutes he made that sound from some other part of the yard my mom was scared and i'm like what's that and she goes i don't know get your little brother in the house and <laughs> brought him and it was summer so we got the, the the windows open so you could hear this and it kept shifting position and i kept going outside trying to figure out where it was coming from Right. And neither of us had any idea. Well, you know, you're in this. Oh, yeah. You know, like every two minutes, and you're like, what the hell is making that weird yeah. noise? You know, and, and it is when you hear it, you're just in such disbelief. You realize how big it is. You just don't know what it is, you know, and what his intentions are. Well, so, so time, I was a little bit, you know, kind of apprehensive about it. But it didn't scare me until I heard it on the Sierra sounds. Uh -huh. Then the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Exactly. Because I recognized that sound from spring 72 when it was right on our yard, doing it over and over again. That's and that was probably because we had just recently got that property and built a house on it. And it may have been the last time he had been there, there wasn't a house there, and he didn't like that. Yep. And there could be a reason for that is because we had two gigantic white pines right in the front yard that were the tallest damn thing within 15 miles that maybe he wanted to climb up and take a little look. And now the house is in the rock spot. <laughs> well, you know, that's what Reese did. He Just like you said, your recognition, instantly he recognized that because, man, I, I had slowed down. I wasn't. I was trying not to breathe hard. I was trying to be cool. And man, just instantly, he's like, no, that's not. He said, that's the sound that Bigfoot makes on Animal Planet. Immediately, <laughs> immediately I recognized it. 
you know, and yeah. when you've never, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and you know what you're dealing with, you know, and so, uh, but it's it's a uh, it's one of the, the huge range of vocalizations. Again, the whistles that we got last Saturday night, man, uh, we were it, we were just blown away, you know, to hear the whistle and just as crisp and clear. You know, it wasn't like what you and I said that we heard there in Montana. This was the, <laughs> and, you know, and it was and you could hear the brush popping over there yeah. where they were. So, uh, so this was really, and then the last thing that we had we had a big foot back in here in uh december and january off of sulfur river and uh down there and it was actually coming onto a man's porch uh stomp around the porch it was actually slapping his dogs around slap one of the dogs off the porch with him looking out the door it actually went down to one of these boat ramps down there uh place in texarkana and uh this man's son actually saw the creek the the big foot down there on this boat ramp and uh and so it so i have some friends have uh randy edwards john lindsey and they were were telling me about it so i took a friend of mine uh named jim owenby and he and i went down there and looked around and so as we get out there we come to a spot we see nothing at first and then when we cross this road and go down through there as soon as jim goes down the hill here comes three deer just hauling and it wasn't because jim was in there they were scared to death man whatever it was that was behind them and we find there by the bathroom there and there wasn't anybody down there camping at the time but it's something like i had found in, in south river at smith park where there the tree is there there's about a two foot space all around the tree that is totally cleared away from any debris right there and uh, the one that we found in Sulphur River actually had a footprint, almost like it was taken rubbing his back. And this tree was the same way. It had no bark in anything for about the bottom five foot around it. So that was really strange. And we're supposed to go back and check it out. And uh, so uh, I'll, I'll let y'all know what happens there. But that's, uh, that's boy, that's been just really uh, uh, an intriguing story because I had an encounter there. I used to deliver down there at UPS. And uh, me and Mary Bowen found the day that we went down there coincidentally not knowing about this story and uh, we went down there about three or four years ago and when we did you know we find a lot of sign and stuff and a lot of broken trees find almost like a not a nest but you know where they build some of these structures and stuff and being a ups man i had uh heard some things down there uh, that were and the thing is at ups you hear mostly at night you know and so man you're like oh golly you know yeah. so uh, so this was really uh one of those things that i'm looking forward to going back and, and checking on again because uh i've gotten better access uh through a friend of mine uh again like i said randy edwards uh randy knows this guy and so we're going to try to go down there and look at that maybe one day this week or the next week and see if uh see if we can find something maybe somebody else has missed and and as far as this is this deal down around a place called uh, jackson creek here in texarkana and off of lake right patman and of course like i said the whole the whole common denominator is Sulphur River down there, you know, and Sulphur River runs from Commer, actually south of Dallas, uh, or I guess west, they're probably east of Dallas a little bit, and then runs all the way uh, back through down about 200 miles to where it runs right through Texarkana, Lake Wright, Patman, uh, Cooper Lake, and then it dumps off um, into Red River right there, just right at the Louisiana line. And so it's like, it's just really, really, it's a, it's a place of its own. It's, it's what you could, you could say, well, man, it's just one of these places. And you would know what I'm talking about because it's something that could appear in any horror movie that's ever been made. And you see a scene from that right there. And so, uh, so that's where this has occurred. And like I said, we're going to try to get out there and look at that. That's something that I look forward to. I'm very, very thankful for people who contact me uh, through the, your venue and some of the others there. And, you know, and, and of course, they'll get in touch with me through Facebook Messenger and, uh, and, and say, well, man, I've had this happen to me. I've had this happen to me. Is there any way, you know, you can, can tell me what to do or, you know, can, can you come down and check it out? And so uh, by getting those reports like that, man, I feel so fortunate. And I'm never too busy to, to answer. Like I said, I told y'all before, I stay in Facebook jail a lot very opinionated about what what's right and what's wrong but but when i get it and get the chance to talk to somebody i don't ever personally ignore somebody but to get those kind of stories man and it just keeps you where you're you're not necessarily at a, a place of just charged energy but man you're like oh great what is going to be the next great encounter that i hear about that's going to be you know bring that kind of encounter and something i can share with folks you know so so very very thankful for that for everybody that does that and those of you know everybody who like on your show who listens to it because guys i'm gonna just tell you the truth you know, when, when you're fortunate to do that and have the, the the creatures that live down here where we where we live. And like I said, they call this Monster Central because we're right in the four states area between Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana and Oklahoma. And uh, to have that happen, I appreciate every bit of it. And, and the more I can share and the more we can share with everybody, the more we're going to learn. 
that one tip that you get from maybe somebody else listening to it might be the one that gives you your next sighting, you know, and that's that's the way I look at it. So I'm always pleased to do that, you know. I always appreciate it when you get a chance to come on the show. I know it's the, not often enough from some people's standpoint. And, uh, you know, we got, we got some other repeat offenders. Caveman Yazi is not often <laughs> yeah. enough. I get pestered all the time. When's Caveman coming on again? And I'm like, well, go help him figure out how to use a computer. <laughs> and we'll have him on again as soon as he figures that out, you know. <laughs> I'm barely above the grade of working in a backus, man. You know, those big things hit the head years ago because I'm not computer literate. But, uh, but you know, you're exactly right. And then, too, the thing that slowed me down this year, like I said, was COVID. You know, COVID got me a couple of years ago. It got me twice, and it got me this year. And uh, it's it's really been uh, it's been a pain in the butt. It affects us all different ways. And I think they're just now finding out what some of the things are. Hopefully, there we get some of this stuff this this. Uh, declassified and we'll get to find out more but it's jumped on my back i'm a pretty good sized guy and i'm 63 years old you know which ain't no spring chicken but uh anyway so that's that's hindered me from getting in the woods as much as i want to but i'm feeling pretty good right now and uh so uh hopefully i'm gonna have some more stuff to tell y'all about like i said got this team of great researchers around me that and um and man if, if i'm not in the woods and i need something done you know i can say hey man can you go do that and they'll do it and we do that for each other, and that's what makes a good research team. And we don't ever, you know, try to, to hide anything from anybody. We share everything that we've got. Man, when you got something like that right there, good things are going to happen to you. And so if, if you if you want to become a researcher, man, find you a group, some people that you trust, and make you know, and, and make sure you share. And then whenever you do, go together. And the the funny thing about it, man, uh, you'd think that the more the, 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 the more people there is, it's not necessarily going to be your chance of seeing a Bigfoot, but that's not true. Uh, we went down one night there, and again, here's another one of them horse stories that we're talking about. Me and Reese and Randy Crawford had gone down there, and uh, so here comes these guys pulling a horse trailer. Man, they were bouncing through the road, and we've been having a lot of activity all way. Even me and Randy, that Thursday at night, had had a Bigfoot scream at us down there on this road. So here comes this horse trailer, boy. Reese is kind of mad, and I'm kind of mad, and Randy's kind of mad because... You know, this is just going to screw everything up. And they didn't have their horses saddled already, so they took forever to get them saddled. And finally, they get to, one of them finally gets his horse saddled. He drives in there where we are. We're probably maybe 100 yards down there. We come to the trail where Randy and I were, where the Bigfoot screamed at us that 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 night. <clears throat> and when the horse gets right there to the trail, the horse just slams on the brakes. <sighs> Starts backing up like horses do. This guy's about uh, to pull the reins through his teeth. teeth. The, horse, the horse ain't going nowhere. And he goes, I don't know what's <laughs> The horse wrong. can smell what's down the trail, you dummy. Exactly. <laughs> and so I, I lied to him. I'm going to be honest with you. I told him a story because I didn't want him to go there and start shooting around and me be the brunt of an ill-tempered Bigfoot the next time we come down. I told him, so, well, so we heard a bear right here the other night. <clears throat> he goes, man, that's no bear. He said, this is the horse I take me to go elk hunting in Colorado. It's seen a lot of bears. He said, that's something different. So, you know, we just kind of said, yeah, man, it's kind of strange. Well, anyway, I just kind of thought we'd let you know. Well, then sure enough, finally his other buddy gets his horse saddled. He rides down there. Man, he did, He wasn't privy to see what had just happened to us. All of a sudden, his horse hits the same trail. Man, that horse stops. <laughs> It rears up. He pulls the reins back in there trying to get him settled down, man. And the horses, you can tell the horse is spooked. It's not just a horse that's wanting to be honored. This horse is spooked. And he, and he did the same thing. Blankety blank, man. He said, what's wrong with this stupid horse? He said, you know, and told him, said, man, well, we, we heard a bear right here across where we were the other night there. And he goes, man, that ain't no big deal. He said, this horse, same thing, sees bears. It goes elk hunting with me. Uh, you know, there in Colorado and in Montana, it said it sees bears. And he said, so whatever it is, it's something different. So we didn't expound the story. Finally, his other friend got there. They left. Uh, a little bit later on, we hear a gunshot in the woods. Don't know what that was. But we go back to where the trailer was, and I left Reese, my son, back there. I said, well, I said, you about ready to go. And he said, whisper for me come over he goes i said was it been active and he goes come look so we do and there's about oh gosh i, I can't even remember now exactly we counted them and mine and his count was always the difference between one or two we had several rocks that were still landing on this horse trailer sure enough while we're walking towards the horse trailer here comes one out of the woods right at my feet i just put the spotlight on it and watch it roll and they had been throwing rocks at this trailer so I don't know whether it's because of the horse thing, but they were sitting there and, and it was one of the best nights we ever had. And so, again, if you're not in the woods, you know, it's not going to happen to you. But it was really, really uh, the, the way it happened. Uh, it was it was it's I, I can't even tell you the excitement that I felt when I look and see all these rocks. Again, we had one one night up there, Oklahoma, throwing rocks on top of our cabin when a bunch of us went in there. But, but uh, man, it's 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 uh, one of these things that that 
the the things you think well i'll never be surprised again this is pretty cool until the next time you go out and something happens you know yeah. and you can't wait to share and they do something totally different they've never done before completely unexpected exactly. like when you you and eric were up here and they not only shoved down one tree they exactly. shoved down two of them the same day That's within right. about what three hours of within each other three hours. <laughs> You know, and we're sitting basically right across the road, you know, over in the, yeah, in the campsite. We're watching the top of the one tree right. going back and forth before it goes kaboom and falls over. And we're like, well, the wind didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I said, each, each one can be even grander than what the one was before, you know. So how can you not enjoy doing this all the time, you know? And <laughs> it's a, a, like even my wife enjoys it, you know, and, and, uh, she knows that I'm gonna protect her, but but she boy, she's good research. She's she's enjoys it enough that she actually puts her best foot forward and boy, just a great, you know, a great asset to have, you know, and it wouldn't have happened had we not had these things uh happen to us first and tell her about it. And it, it sounds so disbelievable to her until all of a sudden she goes out and it happens there too. So again, man, it's 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 really good. Uh I I, I plan to do it. it's uh see what it's fixing to be April. April I find of the, the months for down here in Arkansas, the most active months, you're going to have February, March, and April with, are going to be your most active with just a little bit of bleed over into May. And then it's going to start again towards the middle of September and then October and November with just a little bit of bleed into December. Those will be the most active months you have here. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, I look forward to these next couple of months getting to get into the woods, feeling good now and doing those kind of things. And, uh, and I'm going to be there. Uh, same thing up here, William. It's just that spring and fall are set at a little bit different times of the year. Yeah, yeah. We got end of April, May, beginning of June. They're moving around a lot, mm -hmm. and then September, October. They're moving around a lot, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, we're, we, our our temperature down here is pretty much temperate. You know, like I said, it's it's not like Florida or anything else like that. But but you know the you can I you can look at these these uh, months every year. And it's basically the there's if there's a pattern, it's called same time next year. That's a rule. Unless something is vastly changed in your weather, you're going to get some of the same you know patterns repeated. So so for that, I look forward to unless you know we I think right now it's like 49 degrees out here, and it's been already like 82 and 83 this year. So that's a big swing, you know. But yeah. but I'm going to be spending some time into the woods there, and uh, hopefully get out with my research partners there, you know. And, and with, uh, with speaking Steve. of research partners, the only one that hasn't been up here yet is uh, Stephen. And I know we need it. Stephen to come up here this year, and he well, can enjoy doing some research where you can camp out. And you don't have to worry about danger noodles all over the ground. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Just grizzly bears. That's all you got to worry about. Yeah, we'll have somebody that's used to doing dishes up there, too. No, I'm just kidding. His wife is very good to let him research, you know, and uh, this is not an easy easy subject for, for uh, people who are married because it does take a lot of your time if you're going to be any good at it, you know, and I'm blessed to have a woman who, who supports me on that, you know, unless we do. And Stephen is too, man, because, you know, it's not, you know, as well as I do, this is not an inexpensive habit. You can spend a lot of money doing this stuff. And oh God. Uh, I know, especially if you let them find out that bacon exists. Oh my God, they'll <laughs> break the bank now. Yeah, the bacon, bacon, bacon thing. Yeah, yeah. bacon, bacon, bacon. The peanut butter, four fifty nine a jar down here. You know, when you bury it and they take it, and you know, come back two weeks later and leave you the empty lid there on your gift and stump. You leave more peanut butter, and the same thing happens. Yeah. So, so it is, man. It's 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 really something that I enjoy. Again, I really enjoy listening to other people, the stories that they tell. Uh, I've got uh, coming up here May the the twentieth here. I've got the second annual Louisiana Bigfoot Film Festival uh, put on by Brian Horn. I'm very excited to be there to listen to that you know met some real nice people last year they generally show uh, like two movies and stuff like that then we have some other researchers give uh and not just local researchers last year we had the guy from mountains uh the, some of the guys from mountain monsters and uh and guys i'd never met before and i said man i said how come they they don't ever let y'all present any real evidence i know you got to have some man this because that's what pays the bills is the comedy but those guys have some great stories too you know things that have happened to them they're not just you know rogue amateurs they put together you know, uh, just to form a comedy team or a comedy troupe. Those guys have got some real, some real interesting stuff. As do the people there that were uh, the, there last year uh, from uh, the, the show Killing Bigfoot, which was not named by them. I think Travel Channel or A and E or somebody chose that name. But anyway, there's some good researchers as well. And so I've got that coming up there in May. I'm looking forward to doing that with those folks, you know, and getting to meet some some just boots on the ground, just average everyday people like most of us, all of us are, you know. So that's going to be what's really exciting.
Um, and then after and that, don't forget way sooner than that coming up in less than a month. In Hastings, Nebraska. Yes, sir. The annual Nebraska Bigfoot Conference, mm. which you will get your chance to hear speech and meet William Lunsford, Stephen <laughs> Hill, me, Robin McRae, Pat McRae, Lyle Blackburn, Keith Crabtree, Blaine Tyler will be hanging around in the yeah. audience. Rich Soul will be hanging around in the audience. And Christy Sci-Fi will also be hanging around there. So if you want to meet a whole pile of legit Bigfoot researchers all in one place at one time, in the middle of America, right next to the lab, recognized by the Library of Congress, Nebraska Bigfoot Museum, which is super cool, come see us April 21st, 22nd. That was like reading a list of the who's who of Bigfoot and right there. Take me out of it and put the rest of them in there. But you get a chance to see that. And these people are good people. You you want to pick their minds? They'll sit there and talk Bigfoot with you. They're not going to say, go on, I'm going to, you know, I've got other things to do. They're going to sit there and talk Bigfoot with you as long as you want to. And if, if you're really interested, it's a perfect place to come and, you know, to come and learn something and to get to meet some of these people. And, and you make lifelong friends, man. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, when I, if those of you that I get to meet hopefully do, and it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And I, I'm uh, I made my first uh, Nebraska Bigfoot conference, and so I'm very excited about that right there. And so it's it's going to be something that uh you know it with good Lord's help, it's going to be an annual event for me. You know, because uh, a, a good Bigfoot conference is something you see just how passionate these people are, you know, we're no different than some people say, oh, well, man, you look different. Well, I do. I look different every day. I wake up in the mirror, sometimes don't recognize my own self. But, <laughs> you know, but the, the people that we have there, these are some of the best people you're ever going to meet. They're going to tell you some of the truest stories you've ever met. And it's going to really, in, you know, to, to, to enlighten you as far as for, for what uh, is actually out there in the world that we don't know everything about like we think we do, you know. Yeah. And shout out to Ron Moorhead, who was one of the speakers there last year and did his presentation with the Sierra Sounds and stuff. And, you know, he was recently on that Port Lock, Alaska show. Yep. Where they flew him in and had him call blast the Sierra Sounds. <laughs> and his agreement with him is, I'll do that, but I'm not hanging around afterwards. Really, <laughs> <even."> <laughs> Man, I've actually done that on Mercer Bio, opened up my truck doors. I've got a very good sound system on my truck, uh, truck. open it up, put in, I have the Sierra Sound CD put it in and blast it off the water there at Mercer Bio and actually had them jokers answer me, you know, so it, it really, so you, and you can get those CDs for pretty inexpensive and he's got some good stories behind it. You hear them talking in the background as they're recording these Sierra sounds and then your next CD has just most of the sounds together, but you hear that man, it's one of the coolest things you've ever seen. So, so for Ron to be there, like I said, he always, uh, you know, man, he brings it, you know, and, and, uh, and most of these other people do do. So looking forward to, to all that and, and, and the ones I haven't met yet. And, and if y'all get a chance, you know, y'all get up here and see it and, and, and support Harriet because uh, from what I hear from everybody, from what I saw in, in Duke, uh, the show that he did with her, she's very knowledgeable as well. So uh, that's something that's good that we're all going to learn from. Really, really wonderful person, really cool museum, which will now have exhibits uh, from me and Blaine Tyler and William yep. and several of the people that are going to be there speaking this uh, year. Yep. And I, I, I sent her a poster of the... Uh, a couple of frames from the video that I took of the largest X structure that's been documented so far. Only six stories tall. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you don't really realize it until you see me walking down and standing underneath it. And I look like a little ant. And I, Somebody made a comment on that the other day. and went, yeah, I want to hear somebody explain to me how the Boy Scouts made this one. Exactly. <laughs> you know, when you're six one or six two, people think, oh well, Duke's he's five four or five five. No, Duke Duke's six one, six two. See him standing underneath there. That kind of puts it in perspective just just how colossal. Colossal is the only word you can can use. Uh which is the same root root word as Colosseum. Just how big these structures are. You mean I mean it's just yeah. real. And even the video, you know, with a human for size comparison doesn't seem to do it justice until you're actually there in person and you see how gigantic these things are. And then your first reaction is, I don't want to stand here anymore. Whoever <laughs> made this might come back. I'm, I'm leaving now. <laughs> exactly. You know, and then that's true. We, we joke about it. But man, there, there hasn't been a, a time, any researcher that hasn't been out in the woods and he hadn't had something scare him to death, you know. 
and and uh, and then puzzle him as well as oh my gosh what was that how close was it to me do i need to be going back there for the next year whenever i get this wild hair that i need to go travel back into the woods and check and do some bigfoot so again really really uh really something that's that's uh it's a new experience every time you go i'm absolutely convinced that they respect courage too because i've noticed that with the the more indifferent you are to their obnoxious behavior the right. more they seem <laughs> to respect you you know a uh, good example when you were up there with us william and they were all deciding to sneak up on camp not very sneakily they were making plenty of noise and let us knowing they were doing it and me and mike are so used to it we're just ignoring it we're talking to each other and they're getting noisier and noisier and closer and closer and finally, William, who doesn't camp and pick, <laughs> not supposed, not worry, not goes, uh, are you hearing this back here? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, hold on. I turn around. I go, hey, guys, how you doing? And I turn back and I go, that takes care of it. And he's looking at me like, you're nuts. What does yeah. that do? And then about three, four minutes later, William goes, hey, all the noise stopped. And I went, well, yeah, we let them know that we can hear them now. So now they're sneaking up silently. Now that we've acknowledged that they're there, they're not going to make any more noise, you know. <laughs> You're not supposed to be telling that on me. You're supposed to be saying, yeah, we'll handle that, man. He was just as brave as threw his chest out and said, y'all, come on in. Folks, that didn't happen because I wasn't used to these creatures, and I didn't know how used they were to me and how things were going to go. So it's very, it was uh, something in the back of your mind. I still trust, you know, like I said, they're. Hey, hey, man, I was very, very impressed because those were clearly Sasquatch noises. Very much. And they were in five places around us simultaneously. Right. So you got at least five individuals, three of them behind us, two of us across the road from us, right. all at the same time, making a racket. And for somebody that isn't used to camping out there, having, you know, like they're surrounding us, they're moving in. Well, we're used to it. We know what they're up to. But yeah, you know, most people would have pooped their pants and ran. And that's only the second time I had camped since I saw Bigfoot since 1977. So I like I said, I'm, even though... I said I did back in 2019. Saw a Bigfoot in Oklahoma. Went up there with you up there to to Montana. That's the only second time I've been out there. And I'm like, man, this camping's for the birds, man. I just get me a good, <laughs> good hotel with a strong lock on the door. But but no, it yeah, was. Yeah, then very you went camping man. with Steven down there in the south, where and it was even colder than when you were up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was bad, man. It was, but. You know, that's that's part of it because you, the times you think you won't have nothing happen that night. It was there in, in uh, 19 degrees there land between the lakes. And when I was sitting there, I was, I was uh, talking to some folks, man. And all of a sudden, like I said, I've got a I've got Bigfoot up there whistling, you know, and, and uh, I was talking to Gary Spikes Sr. Man, you could hear the Bigfoot. I said, Gary, we got some up there whistling at us, you know. And then later on that night, me and Stephen go to bed getting the doggone camper. I mean, get in the tent there, start camping, going to sleep, and then we've got a Bigfoot walking around our tent. And I said, Stephen, we've got a Bigfoot walking around our tent. I reached down, I keep a little sawed-off shotgun just in case it was one of those dog men or anything else. I realized I've left my shells in Stephen's side pocket of his door, so I guess I'm going to have to try to pistol whip whatever yeah. it is. And Stephen pretends that he's getting cold there, so we go get into the truck. But but whenever we went back out, like I said, you could see where some of the impressions were that were still filling up with snow again. It was snowing to beat the band. So, so again, that's one that you just, and I'd never been to Land Between the Lakes before. Got to meet Kumbo that day, which was, a, you know, and, and some other people, Cheryl Corntassel. Really, really a, a good experience for us, you know, had a good time, and and then that was fun, too. So, again, I'm expecting the same thing at the, the Nebraska Bigfoot Conference. You know, it's fun when you hear about this stuff after the fact, like, yeah. you know, after you were out there with Stephen, I talked to Stephen, he goes, Duke, it was even colder than when you had William up there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And he goes, no, it hit 19 degrees. And I'm like, oh, my God, didn't you know that cold snap was coming? He's like, well, yeah, but I didn't tell William because he would have bailed out on the trip. And he's right. <laughs> I, my Internet was out, as it often is. And it, it was 22 there in Montana. And I thought that was cold. But in 19 was cold because we had snow on the ground it was a wet cold we people were packing up that night when we got there it was so cold but but uh, man still we had experiences some other people up there had experiences and uh, and lbl is a legendary place you know and and uh so uh to, to get to go up there that was my first time and uh hopefully it won't be my last time you know but but uh, for, to hear that stuff and like i said steven didn't tell me that's like the time that he put uh <laughs> snickers yeah, he put Snickers outside my my window up there beside at a Honeybee, Oklahoma, when they have the Oklahoma Honeybee Bigfoot Conference. And all of a sudden, as I'm going to the bathroom with my cell phone, all of a sudden there's one outside my window that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and Stephen knows it, and Mary Bowling can hear it. She's in the she's in the room up there at the front, and she can hear it from there. Yeah, and finally he confesses after that right there. So, so Beating him into your window. Oh uh, yeah, he's. He's about as cantankerous as they are, man. That's one reason I enjoy his company, you know, very, very good researcher. Well, you were, you know, here's another behind the scenes one. I just found this out on the way back here from uh, Mordor the other night when we were driving back from Ashton. Uh, last year I had Eric up here. Of course, you weren't here. Eric made it. And we spent, uh, you know, a few days in the same place that you, that you and me and him were at. And then we went over where you didn't go to, to where the megaliths were because right. he wanted to see the megaliths. Well, you know, there's no Bigfoot over there. It's megaliths. We go over there going to look at megaliths, right? So yeah, we're getting uh, Dave, our local buddy, shows up with his ATV, and he's given each one of us one at a time a ride out to wherever we want to go to to go run around and look for more stuff. So, of course, I, you know, I tell him, take me back to the same place I was at the previous year because I thought it was interesting. wanted to get further up this ridge. Well, this time when we get back there, guess what? There's a teepee structure there. Oh. And the year before, we didn't see <laughs> any Bigfoot evidence. Oh. Now we go back to the one place that I went to the year before that I want to walk up again, and there's a teepee structure right in the middle of the trail going up again. Oh, okay. Now, little do I realize it, but at the same time this is going on, Eric's back in camp with Ashton, the one-man Viking death squad, and he <laughs> says, he goes, hey, Ashton, I bet you 20 bucks Duke finds a Bigfoot track. And Ashton goes, I'm not going to take that bet. <laughs> and I came back and I went, hey, I found a teepee and two Bigfoot tracks. And Ashton goes, see, that's why, right there. <laughs> you know, and that, you know, when that happens right there, sometimes you surprise yourself. Uh, I know Keith was telling me about when he went up there and Keith found tracks when you, you and, and him were up there camping. You know, yeah. and all of a sudden he's looking and you're like, yeah, Keith, there's your track right there. So, uh, like, again, uh, and, I, and the, the, the time I was down there last year, you know, we found, I found a structure there that it had built a kind of a lean to up against one of those other trees, but a big, you know, eight, eight foot tall structure there. So, uh, again, they're, they're just, uh, you know, they do what they want to do, and then who's going to tell them they can't do it? You know, certainly not me, that is for sure. Nope, not me. I'll encourage them, flip them some peanut butter and bacon. <laughs> they have at it. Enjoy yourselves. Love you guys. That's it. That's it. So anyway, I think we better go at this point here. We're kind of running a little bit long, unless there was anything else you had to cover first. Um, no, man, I said, just want to thank everybody, you know, again, for being here, man. Y'all got anybody you can listen to. Thank you for taking that time to listen to me. Also, we just had a tragedy here in Nashville, Tennessee, a shooter that ended up killing six people, including three nine-year-old kids. Let's all pray for the families if we can. The, 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 the hurt that they're going through, the hollowness they'll feel, and they won't feel the, the joy for a long time that we've, we've felt tonight in talking about these things. So again, let's remember them folks and, and, uh, uh, that that's really about it. But just there's so many more. I keep telling people all the time, it's just Bigfoot, and it's important to us. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's it's not as it's not what really matters. But uh, but it means a whole lot to us. And so again, let's pray for those people right there because uh, the, they uh, that it's gonna be a long time for their heart will never heal. There'll always be that empty spot there. But but let's do that as well. And let's hope we get some politicians in there in office who give a rat's hat. You know that can 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 put can put a stop to the silliness that's going on between the other countries pushing us around. You know, so yeah, guns don't kill people, knives don't kill people, bayonets don't kill people, pencils don't kill people, cars <laughs> don't kill people, that's right. idiots kill people, and pencils don't misspell words either. If guns kill people, then pencils do misspell words, and we know about how absurd that sounds. So. Yeah. Uh, same line of logic. Oh, steamrollers don't kill people either. Unless That's you get right. In front of one. That's right. <laughs> but let me let me thank everybody. Thank you again, Duke, for having me back on here. It's been a while, but I hope hopefully being well now, I said I can be back on here and have more good stuff to share. I'll tell you what, buddy. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you here again. And uh, less than a month with all my other friends over there. This is going to be like a big Bigfoot family reunion. Yep. And uh, last year when we were staying over there at the museum, there were too many of us and it attracted the attention of the locals and they all came and were tapping on the windows and walking around them and leaving fingerprints on Christie's car. <laughs> and <everything. laughs> so we're sort of anticipating since there's going to be even more of us there this year, probably going to be the same thing. We'll probably get a visit from them. So, you know, hopefully we can catch that. We'll see what else we manage to catch while we're out there doing our little one-day mini expedition right before the yep. conference. If we come back with the next Patterson-Gimlin film, we'll let you guys see it right away. So just in case that happens, you all better come down to the conference because you never know. 
with me, Blaine Tyler, Rich Saul, Christy Sci-Fi, uh, and Ashton and the One Man Viking Death Squad, all in the woods, all at the same time, you could easily get. The next Patterson Gimlin. Hey, hey, it's like watching a battle <laughs> roll on WrestleMania, but I think we're there. <laughs> oh, the Bigfoot will show up just to check out their, their favorite researchers. Oh, Blaine Tyler's down here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I seen one of his videos while I was peeking at somebody's window a couple of years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And, and you see some of the things he has. You're liable to be the star of his next video. So come on down. <laughs> 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 Yeah, if you're a Sasquatch, you get too close to Blaine to look out. He's probably going to get on video. He's really yep. good at that trick. <laughs> exactly right. Very, very good research. Folks that I respect the heck out of, man. So if you can, you know, I said, this ain't like a commercial. We're telling you the truth, man. It's something that we're all excited about. And I hope that shows. Yep. And, and, and look forward to, to meeting who I can, you know, and, and that'll be a lot Me of fun. Me too. I mean, I've never met Steven in, in real life before. I'm really looking forward to meeting him. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys that I have met and actually gone bigfooting with before, including Rich Soul. He's been out here bigfooting with me in Montana, but I've never had a chance to go bigfooting with him in Nebraska. So right. I'm super psyched to do that. Exactly. And then Blaine Tyler, you know, I'm a fan. Oh, <laughs> Blaine's man, freaking okay. amazing. I can hardly wait to meet him. Yeah. I'd rather meet Blaine Tyler than Steven Tyler, buddy. That's just the way. <laughs> Hell yeah. Blaine Tyler's <laughs> higher on my list. Steven Tyler too. That's I already met Metallica, so yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for spending some time with us. Well, Hope you enjoyed the show. I appreciate and thank it. you so much for being on the show again, William, and getting everybody up to date because you always have interesting stuff to talk about, fascinating stories to share, and amazing evidence to freak out the skeptards, make their heads explode. <laughs> That's the part I like best. Freak out the skeptards, make heads explode. That's my Me favorite. Both. That's why I'm in it, just That's to make it. heads explode. That's why. <laughs> now, I'm actually in it because I like the Sasquatch, and I want people to quit shooting at them. That's Remember it. these two things. Sasquatch are not monsters. That's right. Do not, not shoot them. They don't like that when you shoot them. <laughs> they <laughs> It won't be your friend anymore, and it probably won't kill them, but it might kill you. So That's don't it. shoot them. <laughs> now you shoot them, and and you don't do the job. They get to go hunting, and that's not going to be a good experience for you. You know. Yeah. yeah. And and they do hold a grudge, and they will they, they will not consider all your family members to be members of the that tribe that's at war with us. That's right. So that includes your wife and kids and stuff. You think you're all big, bad, macho, man. You can go shoot a Bigfoot. Okay, now your wife and kids get to look over their shoulders. Yep. Don't want that for anybody. Uh-uh. And remember how good they are at sneaking around and hiding. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, don't no. shoot. Don't shoot the Sasquatch. Dude. Unless it's charging and trying to kill you, and it's not just going wooga, wooga, wooga to scare That's you away. It. That's exactly right. <laughs> don't, don't ever shoot at one. Don't ever aim a gun at one. Because they will hold a grudge forever, and it ain't a good place to be in. So with that, love everybody. Again, thanks for being on the show, William. Hey, Hope you all Thank have you, a, a great weekend and a great night. And be back with us this following weekend. We're going to have another spectacular guest. Because that's all I've got lined up in between here in the conference is nothing but spectacular guests. Hey, Robert Kreider is going to be on again soon. Be good. All right, everybody. Take care. Don't hug any Wookiees and don't throw donuts to the Loch Ness sure Monster. You're kind to everyone. Uh, safety first, last, and always. Pay it forward. Don't be mean to people if you don't have to be. Um, don't flip off the mountain giant. Don't poke Dogman with a stick. Don't punt the puck, would you? And for God's sake, whatever you do, do not hug the Wookiee.
stump. And uh, you can see he's marked it with his own little placing a log there beside it to let, I guess, all the rest of them know that he is, uh, that's his place and all. Um, looks like on the ground, possibly, right there is a track with those two little sticks inside. Again, quite possibly another track right there. Uh, it's rained on, so it kind of makes it kind of tough to discern, but sometimes you just have to let Mother Nature have her victories. But you can see this is not how big that Bigfoot actually was, how he showed up. This is not all that high. This is probably up to my waist, which is about three feet. And you can see, you can look down through there. There he is where he has run, had run from. That's why I could see that he was heading my way. Because you can see it's pretty open. Once you get down here, you can't see as much from the road. But as you go into the woods, you kind of have a little flat right here. Got a really good trail coming through here. Well, hogs have been all over the place down here. And this appeared to be the trail that he was on right here as he came through here because he was further back. And this, this trail ends up exactly at the stump that he was hiding on or the tree. That's the tree and the stump where he's hiding behind again. And here we are with lots of tracks, mud right here to be sure. Lots of hog activity. Again, but you'll see the trail going right through yonder where he took off and he was running behind. So again, it ends up right there at the stone. So thought you might find this interesting. Uh, I sure did.